In this video, I'll be doing a couple symbolizations. The first one is an exclusion question, and the second one is a superlative. In this exclusion question, it says, none but Alfred and his teacher are able to solve the problem. Now, this is sort of an exclusionary cause. I'm actually talking more about the solving of the problem than I am talking about Alfred and his teacher. Uh, and I'll get into what that means in a moment. Okay, so some important things. Uh, none, negations are always things we need to think about. Um, but really, the important issue here is about solving. So, solving is the F predicate, and I want to say uh, something here. Well, first I need to say, uh, who can solve it? Well, it's the none but. And over here, what are they trying to solve? The problem. Well, the nice thing about the problem is that's just the name B. So, in fact, I don't actually need to worry about this at all. I don't need to invoke any, any, invoke any universals, existentials, quantifiers, nothing. That's the nice thing about the name. So now I just need to say none but. Well, what does none but mean? Well, it means no one, so no person. So I can symbolize no person in a variety of ways. I can actually say uh, for all people they can't solve it, or it's not the case that there exists someone that can solve it. So instead, I'm actually going to say, I am going to say it's not the case that there exists a person uh, who can solve the problem. Okay, so let's give this a shot. It's not the case that there exists a person and fxb. So what do I have right now? I say it's not the case that there is a person that can solve the problem. Okay, well that's pretty close, but I haven't captured the exclusionary cause that says but Alfred and his teacher. So I need to actually revise this to include the exclusionary clause. And the exclusionary clause says, and what is so special about this person? The, spe the person is not equal to Alfred. And the person is not equal to his teacher. Now I'll actually symbolize that in a different way. I'll use this symbolization uh, to the teacher of Alfred, which is C of A. So I'm using operations here. Now I can say F, X, B. Now to be clear, what this says is, it's not the case that there is someone that is not Alfred, nor is it Alfred's teacher, and that person can solve the problem. So this now says the only people who could potentially solve the problem are Alfred and Alfred's teacher. Now the question you might want to ask here is, should I actually say that Alfred can solve the problem? and that uh, Alfred's teacher can solve the problem. And this is what we talked about in class as the difference between implication and implicature. In exclusionary cases, it turns out that we do not logically imply this. It is possible for me to say none but Alfred and his teacher are able to solve the problem, and then I could say, and even they can't solve the problem, which is just a fancy way of saying no one can solve the problem. And that's actually compatible. So when you symbolize an exclusionary case like this, you do not add in the assertion uh, of the positive case for the individuals. Why? Because the exclusionary case is much more speaking about, in this case, the problem and the solving, and not so much about Alfred and his teacher. When we move on to superlatives, it's pretty similar in how we symbolize it, but it turns out that the implication is different. So let's look at this. Tom's brother is the coolest teacher, and he teaches all the students in grade 12. Well, this comma and, that's easy, but a very important word I need to look out for is he. He is typically a reference word, but in this case, um, I just need to figure out what uh, term, and we'll talk about that in a second. Well, let's just worry about the superlative. Tom's brother is the coolest teacher. So, in this case, the superlative is all about being the coolest. So again, for coolest, I have blank blank, and so I'm supposed to put in something here and something here. So Tom's brother is the coolest teacher, so what goes here? A is cooler than B. Well, it's Tom's brother. And I can just look at my operations and quickly code that B of A is going to be the brother of Tom, so that's B of A. What goes in here? Well, teachers, because I'm supposed to be cooler than teachers. And so this is supposed to say all teachers. X. 
Okay, so I'm actually ready to write my superlative, but I know that a superlative has a special thing. When it's a superlative, I'm actually talking about all other teachers. So I need to remember to include that x is not equal to b of a, because I need to make sure I state that Tom's brother can't be cooler than himself, because that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to say all other teachers other than Tom's brother, that's who Tom's brother is cooler than. So I'm going to say for all x, bracket ax, and x doesn't equal b of a, then Tom's brother is cooler than x. Okay, now in this case, x is all other teachers. Now I'm able to say, and he teaches all the students in grade 11. Now this is just an additional property, and when I'm doing additional properties, I can actually just put a big and here, and then write all my additional properties here. Let's do that. So here, the key property is teaches, and so teaches is the B predicate, and now I need to say variables. Now I've already used X, X is all other teachers, so I'm going to use two new letters, Y and Z. Well, actually, do I need Y and Z? No, because it says he teaches. So what actually goes in place of my Y? Well, he is Tom's brother, and I know how to write that. That's just B of A. That's actually really nice. He teaches all the students in grade 11. So, uh, all is a universal, and a student is D, in grade 11 is G, and that is the letter Z. It could be Y, it doesn't matter. So now I'm ready to symbolize this. I want to say B, B, A, Z, but before I do that, I must introduce um, my uh, letters. So I'll say, and for all Z, bracket, D, Z, arrow, sorry, not arrow, and GZ, because what I'm saying is students in grade 11, then uh, we have that Tom's brother teaches them. One more. Okay. So this is how I do a superlative with a property. The superlative part is pretty easy, and then I have the property. Now, I might be missing something. The thing I'm missing is that a superlative might imply something about Tom's brother. Have I said here that Tom's brother is a teacher? In fact, I haven't. Does it imply that Tom's brother is a teacher? And it seems that it does. Unlike the exclusionary case, the superlative is speaking explicitly about Tom's brother. So what I'm going to include here is the statement that Tom's brother is a teacher, like so. There's no bracket there because that's a single place predicate. So I'll say B of A and. And I can just throw that in at the front and now I've completed my superlative. Okay, so my superlative had three parts. First I had to actually say that Tom's brother is a teacher. Then I had to say that X is all other teachers. And then I could say Tom's brother is cooler than all other teachers. That is the superlative part. Now, on this side, I say the property. And Tom's brother teaches all the students in grade 11. Again, I typically work from inside out using the predicates. Okay, give this a shot.